Here we are. Okay. <laughs> One of those many hats. <laughs> switch hats. Yep, switch hats. Okay. Oh, sorry. Good morning. Yay for sunshine. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm not going to chatter, chatter, chatter. So I guess we'll go ahead and start. Um, start with the doxology. Okay. Um, you may stand if you'd like to. If you, if you want. Let's do the doxology together. <clears throat> For those watching us online, amen. 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 You may be seated. Our first hymn is number 54, the uh, Solid Rock. So even though everything else seems like it's moving around, we got that solidness. <laughs> Jesus' name, on Christ. 
can't get to finish the book. Hey. hey. Cool. Famous last words. Hey. I said, oh no, then we need to find another. Yeah, book. well, okay. lots of books. Um, any, would, I have a number of options, actually, <laughs> to start next week, if I don't finish this week. Um, Next week is Palm Sunday, too. So. Excuse me? Next week is Palm Sunday. Then the week after that is Easter. Yeah. Oh. And yes, April 9th, we're having our quarterly meeting. Wait, wait, wait. No, not Easter, Easter Sunday. No. You're not. Uh, what? That's Easter Sunday. That's Easter Sunday. Yes. The 9th. So make it a different week. And not well, the 16th. Because of April 16th is Bethany. Is what? Is that the Boston coming here? So you so, know what I say to the business meeting? No. <laughs> May. 23rd. No, we'll call it May. Or April 23rd. Yeah, because, you know, with my birthday especially, it's the, right. we're having a guest on my birthday, April 16th. Oh, yeah. And uh, once again, and it's a good thing that gets brought up because we're not going to be having a uh, hosted a published uh, service on uh, YouTube that we, we have a missionary coming in and um, they need to be very careful with regard to what information about their mission gets out especially on the internet because it, it, it ain't just America that's listening so <laughs> So, but she's going to be our guest, Bethany Boston is, and we're going to uh, celebrate her birthday. We're going to go over after the service, and I'm going to buy her a sub. And she has to figure out what kind of sub she wants. And uh, we're going to come back and eat. Too, too late. And eat downstairs. Um, you really want to We are also, her? I'm sorry, what? You really want to poison her? <laughs> of course. We've done it before. <laughs> Well, we had some practical students who we used to walk over. Well, some, they were used to school. It was, so was Sunday, Sunday, I think St. Up. Patrick's Day fell on the Sunday. We went over for, and we went over to the subway, and we asked for potatoes, potatoes and beer subs. And, and Pastor Corey, who used, the guy that used to be Pastor, or the Pastor Corey Adams, uh, he was, uh, he thought that was very funny. He laughed a lot about that. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and we are having, we're still having our Art Saturdays, um, where you come and you do art. And uh, we had a very successful uh, experiment. We opened up the doors Tuesday for people that just wanted to come in and pray. And that was successful. We're going to do it again this Tuesday. So this Tuesday, it's a time of quiet. There's no preaching. There's no service. There's no anything except... You come in and talk to God, and one of the things we picked on is the world. The world is loud, and we don't need it to be loud. Sometimes the loudness distracts us from talking with the Lord. And um, humble as it is, you know, our churches can be a really nice place just to sit and talk and or think, and pray. Just be here for a while, not do a thing, and that's perfectly fine too. Uh, noon to nine, again, this Tuesday. Um, we're looking to see how often we want to do it, um, how often we can staff it, because you know we, we don't just leave the doors unlocked. Unfortunately, in our loud world, because um, you can wind up the stuff being gone. <laughs> So we want to be careful of that. Be good stewards of what the Lord has given you. We want to take care of it. So sometimes that means you've got to put it in the door and lock the door. Uh, you know, gun owners know that. They have to put, put the stuff away so it doesn't get in the wrong hands. But, uh, so this is, these are things that we're looking at with our church and uh, can, something to serve the community and do something that's a bit different than other places tend to do. Um, um, I don't know, it seems sometimes like, a, a, there's a number of churches, other churches too, that are 
doing a lot of things where preaching isn't deemed a necessity. Because sometimes that can get in the way too. Um, we pray always, but sometimes there are situations where we're upset with the Lord. And we don't feel like talking to him. You ever get that way with your mom or dad? Any of you ever? Honestly? I know I did. <laughs> uh, there were days the last person in the world I wanted to talk to was my mom. Because I know exactly what she'd say. And when, eventually when we did talk, it was exactly what I thought she'd say. <laughs> but I was ready for it. Sometimes we got to get ready for what God's telling us. Because sometimes God's telling us, you're not being good. You're misbehaving. You need to change. You need to stop this. And we don't want to hear that sometimes. Sometimes we're no, we're no better than a four-year-old in a mood, you know? And, uh, I, I think when I, when I look at the book of Acts, the, the people that Paul was talking to, that was a big, a big problem with theirs. They didn't want to change anything. They thought they were just Paul, when Paul was known as Saul of Tarsus. He was that way. And he was zealous about it, man. He stood by his old stuff. And then later when the Lord changed him to the person that the Lord could use to actually reach people and heal people, Paul would later write, all of that stuff I used to think was so important and so incredibly good about me is just a bunch of trash. <coughs> See, the Bible is actually pro-evolution. Hmm. You can be one being and then the Lord changes you and evolves you into the being that you need to be, according to him. Okay. The Bible is not anti-evolution. You want to go to Romans, read through Romans and tell me that's not about a person evolving. Changing from, well, you don't actually change from being a sinful being. You still are because the flesh has got it. Just the stuff that's holding your blood in has got it. That's the deal. That's the, that's the unfortunate thing. So this is why God never intended for us to be out of touch with him. He wants to hear from you, whether you're upset with him or not. We've got a whole book of songs and writings about people who are upset at God. King David would, would get upset with God a lot. Moses argued with God. Moses kept coming to try to come up with reasons why he couldn't do what God wanted him to do. God was kind of, yeah, well, okay, doesn't matter. Do what I want you to do. <laughs> so we pray for those things that help us become the vessel that God finds useful for his purposes. And where is, where is how, how important what we think? Where does that come into that? Well, that's something for you and God to pray about and talk about. Again, Paul used to think all of what he thought was really, really important. He still does. He still screws up from time to time. In his later letters, the epistles that we read that's in Scripture, he writes, you know what? I'm sorry, that was kind of a bad idea. And you know what? Jesus even did that one time. He says, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. He said something to a group of people and they got upset about it. And, and Jesus kind of apologized to the people, that, to his disciples and the people who were following. I'm sorry I got people mad at you because of what I said. He actually did that. It's not that Jesus didn't think before he spoke. That wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem. It must have been hard to be God in human body. Because there's some things you're, 
You don't necessarily connect up. I mean, even though you know everything, things turn out that in a way you don't necessarily expect. See, this is why God created us the way he did. Because he loves us. He loves to watch us. Because we, in some regard, fascinate him. <laughs> He knows all about us, but still. It's not that you can surprise God, I don't think, but he delights in some of the terms that we make. Does God know all of our plans? Yeah. <laughs> Does he have an answer for each one? Yeah. But he tells us thus and thus, and then he watches us go. It's like teaching a little kid, a little infant or toddler, and you tell them something, and then you watch them, see what they're going to do with the information that you just gave them. Usually, it's delightful. Sometimes, though, hmm. So, in Acts, Chapter 28, last chapter. Where do we find Paul? And Luke and others? On Malta. On Malta. And why are we on Malta? Because it was exactly as planned. The cruise was, a, was scheduled to stop at the island. No, not how it happened. They a got three shipwrecked. hour tour. In a three hour tour, they got, yeah, we got shipwrecked. The other thing, too, I never watched an episode of Gilligan's Island all the way through. But my understanding is the professor could create all this stuff, make all this stuff. Why wasn't he smart enough to know how to fix the boat? Because Gilligan kept screwing it up. No, because you're going to have less seasons of the show if you do that. It's very logical. <laughs> Shipwreck. After all the garbage that Paul went through with the courts and the, everything else, on his way to he's getting kicked out, of, kicked out of Dodge, and they are going to let him go to Rome, and he gets shipwrecked. And again, if you believe that taking up your cross and following Christ is going to be full of glory and all nice and everything, guess it again. Because it ain't. Because nature itself is going to go against you sometimes. So what's, what's happening in different countries? Well, that's, that's a, a, and I've heard, storms are God's what? Huh? Punishment, right? No. We've heard it. Spanking? No! We're just, sometimes, maybe, but generally, it's because nature does that. <laughs> God made nature to do certain things, and sometimes storms are part of it. Because <clears throat> sometimes nature needs the storms in order to start something else, or we continue <laughs> something else. Something has stopped it, and now the storm happens, and now nature can continue on its course. No. Jesus himself says, it rains on who? The just and the unjust. The just and the unjust. Oh, okay. So whenever I hear somebody go, well, this is, this is part of God's punishment, I go, oh, what a fool. Because it just, no. It's not. You know what else isn't? Sickness. Sickness is, isn't punishment. It's the nature of us. It's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of what he created and what happened after the fall. This is why we're going to be celebrating Resurrection Sunday in a few weeks. But it's not punishment. It's a natural occurrence based on things that you've done in your life and other viruses and things that you come in contact with. There's very little, you know, God's punishment. Not that he can't use it for that, and occasionally he does. But most of the time, it's just the way things work. 
It's the way God created it to work. That's all. <laughs> we need to be careful of putting more on things than we sometimes do. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it did. It just did. I don't know why. Get to the other side. Get to the other side. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> why did Cain slew Abel? Slay Abel. Why did that happen? Well, there's a reason, but it certainly wasn't following God. And what happened afterwards? Lots of stuff. Why did Lot's wife turn around? Sin. No, she missed home. Wouldn't you? But disobeying God is sin. Yeah, but... What sins are understandable, what sin isn't? Oh, we think we understand sin too, don't we? Wow. Sin is something that displeases God. Well, don't turn around and look back. Go forward. Well, it's really hard, especially when you've got all these photo books. You know? Move forward, man. <laughs> That's where the spirit is. Right? As difficult as it is. What's Paul doing here? What is the book of Acts about? Jesus is dead. He rose again, but then he's like not around and he's giving us the comforter and we don't really even understand that. And the cops are after us. And what? Let's just stay in the upper room in Jerusalem so that we're safe. Um. Right? That's what we want to do. That doesn't mean that's what, that's we, what do. we want to do. <laughs> we don't want trouble. Except the trouble's here already. Yeah. And it's been here for a very long time. You just weren't aware of it. No. What God wants is us to get out of the upper room, go into the streets where it's dangerous, and watch him work. And you're going to have to probably go through a trial and a shipwreck or two, and that's okay. Our human brains just dislodge with that kind of idea. Right? A grand ship is perfectly safe in the harbor, but stuck in the harbor is not what a ship is built for. It's not what it's built to do. It's not to sit and look grand, it's to function. And we're not designed to just sit in church. No. No. Thank the Lord. There are a great number of the followers of Christ, the followers of the Lord, who go out and do things, who go out and feed people, who go out and give comfort to people, who go out and heal, actually, who go out and forgive people who show his grace, show his forgiveness, show his resurrection to be true. You don't do that sitting at home. You do it by getting out. You do it by going places that people, other people say you shouldn't go to. Something off my bucket list, my personal bucket list, rocked the arena last night with the band. It was wonderful. All those years of going to concerts at the arena and wishing, wow, if I could just do that. Well, I did that. <laughs> and my other guys did too. My friends did. Well, Christians shouldn't go to those kind of things. Why? Why not? Wrong. Well, let me just put it that way. Wrong. That's where Christians belong because that's where they need it. What kind of music did you play? I played great music. And I played it wonderfully because, and I know that because God equipped me to do that. And get dissonant. And get rhythmic. 
and loud. How do you think the old psalms were sung? Do you think they were like really nice music and tinkly? No. <laughs> we are <laughs> European ears aren't going to like the way the psalms were played with the instruments that were played. Beer hall music. We're stuck on an eight note scale. That's not how they played music. You've got a white key and a black key and a piano, right? The notes they play a lot are in between the black key and the white key. And it sounds very, very foreign. Well, it's Asian. <laughs> That's... <laughs> right? When God talks to us, sometimes it's going to sound like a note that it's in between the white key and the black key because it's not going to sound good and it's not going to make any sense to you. And trying to go back in the cocoon is not something you see butterflies normally try to do. Because mm -hmm. they have to fly out and be beautiful as they fly out. And have people look at them and go, oh, wow, look. And maybe get a sense of peace from them. Like I have sometimes. There's these things where all these butterflies float up. In these, uh, what do they call them? Different, uh, in different gardens throughout the world that happens occasionally. And it's just, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. I love it. So they're on the Isle of Malta. Verse 8 of chapter 28. And it came to pass that the father of Publius, well, uh, let's, let's go to seven. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief men of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. Okay, these, so I'm not certain how many of the members of the crew of the wrecked ship were involved here, but a, a number of them were. Um, and it says possessions of the chief man, so it might have been a number of areas where, these, where he could have had the entire crew sleep. Because well, how many was the crew again? 276. Yeah, 270 something. Yeah, so there's a lot of fo folks to try and feed in the house, right? And it came to pass, verse 8, the father of Oblius lay sick of a fever and of It's a dysentery. Dysentery, apparently. Yeah. Which is always a delightful disease. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> all, yeah, then it will all, all, all all fade. Gross. You think right? you're going to die. Yeah. Well, it's, but it's not dysentery. Yeah. <laughs> dysentery, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had disease in the island came and were healed. Who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laid at us with such things as were necessary. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Okay, uh, verse 11, English. We got an English tra translation. Who was sign? What does sign mean? Um, figureheads. The figureheads on the front of the boat were. On the front of the boat, you have. Yeah. So these were what? Roman Greek. Sub deities. What was on the front of the boat? I got twin brothers. A big statue. An idol? An idol? Perhaps a god? Good luck. Good luck piece, because this is what made your ship safe. If you put the heads of these Roman gods, the Greek gods, on your ship, you weren't going to get shipwrecked, I guess. Although, eh, I don't know. I don't think that worked out so good. And what is Paul doing on a ship that's got the faces of idols anyway? It's the most convenient thing. Uh, <laughs> the ship that's available. That's right. The it's there, right? Go ahead. The Japanese, Chinese, 
other Asian cultures and Norwegian cultures use dragons as their symbol. Here there be dragons. Be careful. <coughs> Okay, so after three months, verse 11, we departed in a ship of Alexandria which had Richard and the Isle, whose figureheads. figureheads on the ships were Castor and Pollux. Landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from whence we fetched the compass and came, I think they have one month already. Anyway, from whence we fetched the compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew and we came the next day to, I have Petiole. 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 I think that's the incense my daughter burns. No, that's Petiole, I'm sorry. But it is Petiole. Petiole. Mm -hmm. Where we found brethren who and were just a, a number of my Italian friends really don't like the way I just absolutely crucify the Italian language. Yes. Can't you get your Irish tongue around that? Come on. Because you know. there's a lot of Italian language that's absolutely beautiful. A lot of Latin that's just gorgeous. Where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days, so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard us, they came to meet us as far as Apolline Forum and three taverns. And when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Three taverns, are you serious? <laughs> and when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. Yes. Um, I'm part of the note of that is that the forum was about 43 miles from Rome mm -hmm. and the three taverns was about 35 miles from Rome. Mm -hmm. So this is why they're very excited because they know they're getting closer and closer, closer and closer and closer and they're seeing the business. Almost that, there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So we're right. We're, we're head, so we're close. Headed, we're headed closer to a bigger civilization now. So they were thrilled. Uh, Paul was kept to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. It came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they had come together, he said unto them, Men and brothers, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had aught to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. I am bound with this chain for the hope of of Israel. Very interesting. They said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning you, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spoke any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Right. Verse 22 in English. <laughs> Please. They replied, we have heard nothing against you. We have had no letters from Judea or reports from those arriving from Jerusalem, but we want to hear what you believe. For the only thing we know about these Christians is that they are denounced <laughs> everywhere. They are what? Denounced. They are spoken against yes. everywhere. Yeah. Yep. These people are trouble. They've always been trouble. When they had appointed him a day, there came many to him and to his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. 
After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Elias, the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go into this people and say, Hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So what's going on? I would suggest we're talking about a society very much like ours. What are the similarities between this society and ours? The heart of this people is grown gross. <laughs> I call this gross. Another word was calloused. Calloused. We've heard it all before. Next. Grown dull. Right? When their ears are dull of hearing. Okay, what did they like to hear? Remember that town where the people did nothing but waited around for somebody to speak in the public square, something new, talk about some new philosophy, new idea. And they're starting to be able to call that Tuesday. Just another day, just another person talking in the town square. We're learning some new idea. And this Paul is no different. He's, although, actually, he's kind of weird because he talks about raising from the dead. So he's interesting, at least to some degree. And their eyes have they closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. Ah. Their heart. Interesting. Yes. Very. And should be converted and I should heal them. Understand with their heart. Okay, who, raise your hand, who knows how to work a camera? Well, which one? The camera. Whatever camera. Doesn't matter which one. How does it work? You push a button. No. By opening the shutter, light for a nanosecond hits the film. The film responds because it's silver plated. The silver plated reacts to the various shades and intensities. It is then developed, then printed to give a representation of what it took a picture of. Very good. What if it's digital? What if it's digital? Yeah, what if it's digital? That isn't a camera. <laughs> yeah. That's a I think it was Alvin Toffler in 74, wrote a wonderful book called uh, Future Shock, about people using technology they have no understanding. Of course. Wonderful book. Everybody uses an awful lot of stuff. Is why do people need IT people at work? Because, because most of the workers what? don't know how it can do the work. They don't know the proof crew about what's going on. I know some stuff, but boy, am I stupid about a lot of it. And for whatever reason, and God has done this a number of times to me, I do things with technology that you shouldn't be able to do. We were getting, we were having trouble, when we moved to the parsonage, we were having trouble getting on the internet. I said, you need the AOL disk. And we had IT people from WSKG TV, from SUNY Binghamton, I mean, that's not how it works. I go, I don't care how it works. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this to get to the internet. And it doesn't work that way. That's impossible. <laughs> Hours spent by three or four different really smart people to get us on the internet. Everything they tried failed. Yeah. Finally, the one guy said, okay, give me the friggin' disc. And I did. And he put it in. Bloop. Hi, internet. Ah. 
You want to feel like an alien for a week? Pull that on an IT guy and watch him look at you and kind of shy away. Go out in the backyard looking for the saucer in which you landed. Right? There's no reason this should have worked. There's no reason that should have worked. It did. Why did it work that way? It was his idea. I don't know why. I still think it's hilarious because I still get people it doesn't work that way. What makes you think it works as a certain way when you can't interject an alternative? See how we get stuck. Now, can God use storms for punishment? Yes, he can. Can he use sickness for punishment? Yes, he can. He generally doesn't. Generally, it works the way everybody thinks it's supposed to work, except for the one time when some idiot comes up with something new that changes everything you think. Because that happens to be true also. How many times have you fixed something in a way that other people have said will never work and always has? <laughs> this guy. Man, yes. if anybody can do that, it's yep. this angel right here. Yep. David Fox. It's not supposed to work that way. Well, let me see. But it does. Understand with the heart. What does the heart tell you? Do it. Heart tells you, the heart can confuse you just as well. The heart can... But the heart tends not to quite be quite so locked in. The brain is sometimes our own prison. We hear the gospel of Christ Jesus. Why he came here? To forgive us our sins. And to heal us. And to have a relationship with. All of the other stuff, as important as some of the other stuff is, is immaterial. Christ is the answer because we needed somebody to forgive us. Somebody who loved us enough to look at our lives and go, I still love them. I still love Israel. This is why Paul refers to Jesus as the hope of Israel. He's not talking about the nation. He's talking about us. We who wrestle with God. Every single one of us wrestle with God. And you know it if you're being honest with yourself. And if you let your heart look at you, not just your mind. I can look, I can use my brain to take a look at me and go, okay, there's a couple of things wrong, but generally I'm okay. My heart goes, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I had, <laughs> I had a medical procedure <clears throat> two, more than two weeks ago. Next appointment, I went, well, how did I, I'm trying to practice what I preach and not be concerned about. I trust God's timing. I trust God's timing. I trust, I trust his timing at all, man. Come on. I want him. The procedure just happened yesterday. It's Tuesday. What's the story? That's my heart's going, you know, wait. Okay. <clears throat> so I get the follow-up appointment. Guess what happens? It was the Thursday after the Wednesday after the huge mountains of snow we never got. But the doctor had to change his schedule and went, hmm, okay, you know, that's not a problem. What am I supposed to do, get angry about it? I'm the one that's important here. I'm the one that needs the information. Okay. Gets moved to Monday, two weeks after. I get to the appointment Monday, bright and early, and the doctor has a family emergency. How about if we call you later at home today? Okay, that'll be great. You know? So I'm at Lord's and I'm going, 
the heart's going to relax, chill, the brain is, I want to know if I'm going to die soon or not. <laughs> right? So I go home and wait for the phone call. And I get a phone call. Hello? Yeah, the doctor can't do it today. Can you, how about Thursday? Okay. I suppose. No! Tell me now! <laughs> Thursday comes, right? Now, in that two-week process, I'm looking at my, my heart's going, please don't be a hypocrite, will you please just relax and not be a jerk and not be anxious for anything. Remember what the scripture told you, David. Come on, we know you can do this. That was the Trinity. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit going, we know you can do this. You have ears, listen, understand what you're hearing through your heart, not the brain that's going nuts right now. Okay, if you were going to die soon, so what? What difference does it make? What can you possibly do? Well, I'd like to know. Okay, but why? <laughs> You're going to go in the garage and create something that's going to cure you? Why don't you go to the one who does have a cure? I don't like your cure sometime, God. You've cured a lot of my friends. They're with you now. I want them with me. Right? Because that's God's cure sometimes. Out of here, with him, in his time, in his realm, in his glory. <sighs> and yeah, there's times where it's sad. That's when the heart weeps. And that's where sometimes the brain kicks in. Okay, remember the words that he's told you in his library of books. If your morning will turn into dancing. And that's the truth, because it will, if you let it, if you let him, and not enjoy mourning and so on. not want people to see you crying and suffering, because you think, I don't know, it's a badge or something, it's a state that happens, you wax gross, you love the state you're in, and you don't want to change it, and Jesus is here to change it. But I don't want him to. I like feeling miserable. Yeah. I like my misery. I need my pain. Captain Kirk even said that. I wanted to slap him when he said it. Yeah, thank you. It was in one of the bad movies. Their heart of the heart of this people is wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes have they closed. That was their choice. Lest they should see with their we're afraid of the truth. We're afraid of change. Beloved Bill was just saying that this morning. I don't like change for change's sake. I love change for change's sake. We can get you help for that. I don't need help for that. You need help for the other thing. I'm sorry. One way is freedom, the other is imprisonment. It's slavery. But we don't want to think of it as slavery because you know that's bad. What we're doing to ourselves right now, that's good. It's not slavery. Don't make me bring up my favorite TV show, The Prisoner, again. <laughs> it's not slavery and security. There's a lot in that allegory for sure. There's a reason why he played the Christ figure in one, one point. To free you from your prison. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. And we're not just talking the heart either. We're talking about all of us, the guts. Anything that can help remind you of what you've already been told. What did Paul use to talk about Christ Jesus? He didn't use the New Testament. It wasn't written yet. What did he have? <coughs> scripture. But Jewish scripture. And People listen to it still. Don't be so concerned about doing the Romans road. The person doesn't like the Romans road. He wants the Hebrew road. Use that. Know, your, know God's word. Be able to use it. Who are you talking to? 
an italian guy an irish girl you talking to a communist are you talking to an atheist are you talking to a nazi who are you talking to it isn't jewish scripture it's believer scripture by way of moses and by way of the prophets where do we get jesus in that well there were pointers the original hearers weren't going to see the pointers but now we can see them because over time scripture has proven to be revelatory and understand what their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known, verse 28, therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Meaning, debate. Arguing. Arguing. Yeah, debate. Good stuff. Some translations say arguing vigorously among them. Vigorously themselves. arguing. Good. Yeah. Much Love dissent. that. Change doesn't come without some of that. <laughs> it's a good thing. It really is, because then you can bounce ideas and the heart can make you hear something new. It doesn't work that way. Here, try this AOL disc to get on the internet. All right, blink, that's what will work. Something different than what you're used to in this case. When he had said these words, the Jews departed and had arguing among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, rented. And he received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding. Mm -hmm. That's the end of this book. And I'm certain in that house there was a lot of arguing. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy for that. Mm -hmm. Whoever got the idea that standing for Christ and preaching his word was a peaceful thing, who got that idea? Who got the idea it was a pastoral thing and not a wrestling match? Like it is. People are in danger, and they need somebody who's willing to chain next onto a rock and jump in after them. Not some idiot who's going to stand above the pit say some words, throw some pieces of paper of prayer down to them, and walk away. Jesus got his, under his nails dirty for you. Be willing to do that for somebody else. But first, become a vessel that is under his care so that even shipwrecks don't hurt you. So that even medical tests don't scare you into just doing nothing. Don't let the world change your heart to something that is not useful to God. Nobody changed quite like Saul of Tarsus did. He changed a lot. He had to. Heavenly Father, help us think of the, this book of Acts and the disciples and what they had to go through to promote the word of your son Jesus and what that did for us. Help us cut to the chase and cut away all the fat and stupidity surrounding religion surrounding church and what churches are supposed to do or what ministers or priests are supposed to do and help us actually do what you told us to do. Amen.
Amanda Solid. All other stuff is sinking sand, and we're stuck in some sand. <laughs> Get out of it. Did you know you can swim through quicksand? Remember all those old movies, jungle movies, the guy that's in quicksand? Oh, it's quicksand, it's quicksand. You can swim in quicksand. Carefully. Carefully, slowly, but you can. So great is God's love for those who, it says fear, but it's love him, are in awe of him, and really would like to do what he says. Because, you know, getting spanked isn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> Never is. Being first period is still a little old guy. All right. So how do you follow that? Uh, so our final hymn is number 57, The Light of the World is Jesus.
She's got to practice to hit a high E. In the upcoming Madrigal Choir concert, it is a concert of all music from Broadway show tunes. And I have a little duet that I get to do with somebody, and I have to hit a high E, which is one note above that high note that I just sang. So. <laughs> I'm trying to get her in shape. Yeah. Fighting trim. <laughs> Bill Hudson. Hi. Would you please close this from birth? Lord, help. <laughs> Lord, I know I personally do not act as you want me to. Father, we all ask for your help in doing your will. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming. We'll get out. Make sure you come back. Love you all. Have a good week.